nurses must offer spiritual care for patients. Physicians and nurses at Fort Boston Medical Centers said the lack of training explained why they rarely provided spiritual care for the terminally ill cancer patients, although most considered it an important part of the treatment at the end of life. Current U.S. palliative care guidelines encourage medical practitioners to pay, cl pay close attention to the religious and spiritual needs that often arise during a patient's end-of-life care. However, the 204 physicians who participated in the study reported providing spiritual care to just 24% of their patients. Among the 118 nurses, the figure was 31%. The 69 patients with advanced cancers who took the survey reported that even lower rates saying that only 14% of nurses and 6% of physicians provided them some sort of spiritual care. Past research has shown that spiritual care for seriously ill patients improves their quality of life, increases their overall satisfaction with care, and decreases aggressive medical treatment, which may in turn result in lower overall health spending. In the past, some nurses and physicians have said, well, that's not my job. But the tides are changing. We can no longer ignore the aspect of spiritual care. This survey showed that the majority of providers and patients supported the appropriate appropriateness of spiritual care, such as a doctor or nurse praying with the patient or referring the patient to the hospital chaplain. Lack of training, they said, stood out as the biggest barrier for providing spiritual care in this small study. Only 13% of doctors and nurses responded ever having had spiritual care training. How can your facility provide training to minister to the spiritual needs of your people, your patients? A nurse cannot provide what he or she does not have inside. A caregiver of strong mind, body, and spirit will deliver that care. That's where my self-care for healthcare comes in. I'd love to tell you about it.